In this lab, you are going to be identifying an unknown indicator by determining its Ka or pKa. So in order to complete this lab, you do need to take the Ka of an indicator quiz. This is a formal lab write-up, and so um, there are some helpful resources for you. There is an Excel Ka help sheet. This does not need to be turned in but this is for you to double check to make sure that the calculations that you're doing are correct. There is a rubric that is available for you in Canvas and also an outline to help you, to guide you in the writing of your formal lab report. Once you've completed the lab report, you also want to upload a PDF of your lab notebook that can be graded. Indicators change color depending on if they are in their acidic form or basic form because indicators are a weak acid. And so we can find the Ka. It is equal to the products over the reactants. And we are labeling IN minus, represent the anion form of the indicator, HIN representing the acidic form of the indicator. If we want to find the pKa, we take the negative log of each side. So the negative log of the Ka gives us the pKa. The negative log of H3O plus gives us the pH. And then we have the log of the acidic form over the basic form. So this is a rearranged version of the henderson hasselbalch equation. What we know about indicators is that the acidic and basic form are different colors. And for this lab, we're adding hydrochloric acid to ensure that the indicator is in the, completely in the acidic form. We're adding sodium hydroxide to make sure that it is completely in the basic form of the indicator. And then there's a buffer that's going to be added to make sure that we have a mixture of both the acidic and the basic form. Because they, are, because they are different colors, that means they'll absorb light at different wavelengths, depending on which, if it's in the acidic form or the basic form. And the, in order to determine our pKa, we are going to collect three different absorption spectra, one in the acidic form, one where the indicator is in the basic form, and one where it is a mixture. We can use Beer's Law in order to determine the concentration. If you would like to see a more detailed version of how we come up with this formula, it is in your lab manual. But if we want to find the acidic form of the, the ratio of the acidic form of the mixture over the basic form of the mixture, we just take the absorbances of the mixture, and when I say mixture, I mean the absorbance of the solution of the indicator in the buffer. We subtract the absorbance of the base, that's divided by the absorbance of the acid minus the absorbance of the mixture. This helps us find that ratio of the acidic form of the indicator um, in the buffer and the basic form of the indicator in the buffer. This is similar to what the spectra that you will be using will look like. We have three absorption curves. One is from the acidic form of the indicator. One of your absorption curves is from the basic form of your indicator. And one is a mixture of the two. And notice how this one falls between the two curves. The absorption values that you're going to be using are located along this line and it tells you the wavelength that is being recorded and then the absorbances are written right next to the curve that they correspond to. So the, the blue value in this case would be the acidic form, the yellow value would be the basic form, and the red value would be the mixture. 
And these are the ones that you're going to use in order to find your pKa. We're going to use a combination of Henderson-Hasselbach equation and Beer's law in order to determine our pKa. The pH that you're going to use is going to be the pH of the buffer solution. The absorbances that are or the, in this equation are going to be from your spectrum that was collected. The goal is to identify the indicator based on the color changes that you see, so the colors of the different acidic, basic, and mixture forms, and also the pKa that you identify. Once you know the indicator, you're going to complete a formal lab report describing your results. In the rubric that is provided to you in Canvas, at the very end, there is a list of possible indicators that the unknown could be. So the table on the left, you have already observed this table from when we looked at pH of indicators lab. And this gives you several possibilities with the pKa given to you in this column and the pH where the color changes occur. We also have a second table of possibilities, and this also gives you the pKa and the color changes. The pH range is where those color changes occur. For your paper, you do want to make sure that you include a title, your name as the author, and in the introduction, you want to cite sources and include information on the purpose of the lab, KA, and what that means and how it's useful, indicators, and some background information on indicators, and also spectrophotometry. And again, you want to make sure that you cite your sources in the introduction using superscripts or parentheses. The American Chemical Society uses the superscripts. Experimental section, you want to give a brief explanation as to how the experiment was carried out and do cite the lab manual because that is where the procedure came from. The results. You're going to summarize your data, and if it's helpful, you can include equations, figures, and tables to help be as concise as possible. Although it's not included in um, scientific papers, we do ask that you show an example of your calculations. This makes it much easier to grade to make sure things have been done properly. should include pKa values and also Ka values for your indicator. The discussion and conclusion, you want to be objective, you want to compare your results back to the introduction, talk about why your results are important and why it's important to know what the pKa and Ka values are. You want to compare them to literature values and make sure you cite where those literature values came from. And then talk about the color of the indicator and how you decided which unknown, what your indicator was. Do make sure you include references. So at the very end of the paper, this is where you're going to put the full reference properly um, uh, documented and referring back to the references that you used throughout the paper. The writing style, because this is imitating a scientific paper. We want you to be clear and concise. There are no length requirements, but you do want to make sure you include all the information. Avoid slang and jargon. Use an active voice whenever possible. Uh, avoid first person. You can rearrange the sentence in order to make sure that you're not using I, we, my, are. Okay. Make sure you rearrange the sentence, 
to avoid using those first person um, subjects. Try not to shift, ver shift verb tenses inside of a section. Um, you can shift between sections, but try to stick to one verb tense in the section. It does have to be typed and double spaced. And please do take the time to proofread through your formal lab report before turning it in. Double check for typos and grammar and make sure that it reads clearly to anybody reading it. Although it's your instructors that are grading it, you want to make sure that you are conveying your ideas to a general audience.